from PRX. Friends beyond binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster. You know, here's the thing. This is uh, this is the truth. Uh, it's time for a podcaster. Who makes I don't know anything. I don't understand hair conditioner, and I know people are going to laugh at that. Uh, I don't I, condi- hair conditioner? I don't quite get. It. I conditioned my hair today, and it's kind of in my face, and uh, I only do it every once in a while because they say I'm I'm supposed to be doing this every once in a while, huh? But then I'm like, but I'm not supposed to overdo it. But I don't bother to Google it, and. Uh, I mean, I think it's softer. Is it like moist? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at all. People are going to think I'm making this up or just doing a bit. Is it like moisturizing your skin? Is it? I mean, I guess it's a real thing because it's been around for so long. Otherwise, I'd say, is that like, uh, I don't know, something that you're supposed to do all the time, but then you say, do we really need it? But here's the thing. Let's start a talk. Uh, if you're a regular listener, because <laughs> if you're new, you're like, what did I tune into? But my my hair really is, uh, um, it's in my face. I mean, but I say, well, it's kind of soft. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not, it's not bad. It's just different. When was the last, great question. When was the last time I conditioned my hair before today? was accidentally four days ago because I thought I was at my parents' guest bathroom. And I thought it was shampoo. So instead of washing my that, that that's probably giant hair. I didn't even wash my hair. I just conditioned. I said, well, I'll just condition it, I guess. Uh, I said, like, it wasn't until after I had rubbed it in. Because I, I, I did say, it's strange. They have two things of shampoo in here. Cause, oh, because the bottle didn't, wasn't clear. <laughs> nothing's clear here. And if, if nothing's clear here to you, you're in the right place because it's time for sleep with me. The podcast that's here to keep you company and take your mind off stuff so you can fall asleep because you deserve a good night's sleep. I'm so glad you're here. This show is really here to keep you company so you feel less alone in the deep, dark of night. And if, you, if you're new, it does take a few times to get used to the show. It's very different, and I'll talk more about that coming up in the intro. But I'm so glad you're here because you deserve a good night's sleep. I'm here to try to help, and I appreciate you checking the show out. And these sponsors are able, how we're able to do this totally optional, 100% free, twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. You're hearing me kind of talk about uh, um, supporting the podcast and stuff. And I thought of this analogy, uh, and I don't know if you'll relate to it, because people say, well, what does it mean direct response sponsors, you know, sponsors that uh, support the show based on the support they get, or why should I pay for a free podcast? And I don't know, I, like, uh, one, one thing I thought of is, like, Sleep With Me is a little bit like, I don't know if you have a favorite restaurant that you're a regular at that you go to on a regular basis but what if there was a restaurant you really loved uh maybe it is a restaurant you love and, and you know the people that work there they put a ton of work and care and attention into the dishes they serve and maybe you eat there uh, once a week or twice a week and what if the food was free like paying for it was optional right uh I guess a little bit like tipping, but uh, this is different. It, we serve all our meals for free. Paying for the food is up to you. Now, here's a little statistic about Sleep With Me. Just imagine that the, the restaurant is uh, full of 100 people or 100 tables. And, uh, you know, this thing with Sleep With Me is if three people out of every 100 uh, support the show, the show can get by and, 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 and keep going. And if five people, out of, so you're in a dining room with 100 people eating a free meal, if just five of those people, and I don't know if you're one of them, pays for the free podcast, the show can flourish. So I don't know if you're one of those three people or five people, five people total. If you're one of those five people, this podcast can be not just be here, but be flourishing. And again, everybody else gets to eat for free, which is cool. And I don't know if that re- resonates with you. I mean, it, only if you're a regular and uh, you get a lot out of it and you're in a position to do so. We just need five uh, people out of every hundred people to take action and support the show. Uh, and I'd love it if you could do it. Please support the show. Become a patron. You get ad-free episodes. You don't have to hear these messages, but you get a bunch of other sweet bonus content. But really, you get that idea of like, hey, 
one of those five people uh, paying and everybody else. Look at that. Look at this banquet of lulling, soothing tones. So I don't know it's just an analogy I thought of the other day. And I don't know if it resonates with you or not. If it does, uh, sign up sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Uh, thanks. All right, everybody. It is time for the sleepy supporter zone. The one part of the podcast I need you here is where I pop my peas if you if you please. And I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That's how we're able to be here for you free twice a week. And I haven't been able to thank anybody in a while. So we're making some changes behind the scenes. You'll hear to the ads because I want the show to stay free and come out twice a week. I, you, we're going to do a new thing to let you be a part of that deep, dark night united. But if you like to listen to the show for free twice a week, if you have a chance, check out our sponsors. And if you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it. Uh, you know, that's what like helps uh, like uh, keep the show coming out twice a week. So thank you. Uh, yeah, check out our sponsors, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. That's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. There's links to resources in our show notes, including resources you can connect with right now, even international resources. So please use those if you're having a tough time. It's about being a part of positive change, being a part of communities, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but taking action. There's links to resources where you can learn more and take action in our show notes. And you believe it or not, one of the, the uh, communities I'm a part of is the Sleep Podcast community. And uh, oh, my friend uh, Harris at Sleep Whispers, I don't know if you've checked out Calm History yet. It's an amazing uh, sleep podcast. If you want to relax with curious moments from history. If so, check out Calm History. Each episode is narrated in a calm voice to help you relax or fall asleep. You can travel back in time to hear the global history of Rubber, Joan of Arc, Henry Ford, the Titanic, Marco Polo, Jackie Robinson, Easter Island, and so much more. And all you need to do is search in your podcast player for Calm History or use the link in the show notes to silkpodcasts.com and check it out. That's Calm history. And that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mr. Bart, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. See the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance Rusty Biscuit, Lois, Anna, like banana. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget, get your sleep phones. Sleep With Me branded sleep phones at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. And use Sleep With Me to get a discount on your order. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out your lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is to create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, you know, things you're thinking about on your mind, thoughts about the past, present, the future, thoughts, it could be feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally or that's there, anything you're going through or dealing with, uh, though, uh, like uh, most of the time with my feelings, I feel like uh, they're, the, they're the ones doing the dealing and they're, uh, they're sending me out for air, like, uh, like, uh, and that's like a mild version of sending me out for errands or something. So it could be feelings, but uh, it could be physical sensations, changes in time or temperature or routine. 
Uh, you could have something coming up. You could be traveling or have guests. Whatever it is that's keeping you awake, I'd like to uh, take your mind off it and keep you company so that you could fall asleep. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones and pointless meanders and superfluous tangents. Which means my voice is not traditionally soothing and I get mixed up a lot of times and I don't get to the point. I go on and on and on. But it's all to keep you company so that you could fall asleep. Because here's the thing I said at the top of the show, you deserve a good night's sleep. Whether this podcast works for you or not, if it doesn't, uh, sleep with me podcast, sleep with me podcast.com slash no thank you. But give it a few tries. That's what most listeners, regular listeners say. But I also want you to know, not only do you deserve a good night's sleep, a place you could rest and get comfortable, a bedtime you could feel neutral about or look forward to. Uh, you also deserve, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like the sleep you need so that your life is more manageable, that you could flourish. And I hope sleep with me can make that possible for you. Uh, it, the other thing is the show is about, you know, keeping you company in the deep dark night, as we say, because there's a lot of people listening and while not everyone might not know exactly what you're going through or have experienced, experienced it. A lot of us know how it feels, or someone out there can probably relate to how you feel about it, like listening right now. And so when I say you're not alone, that's what I mean. I'm here to keep you company with my voice, but the spirit of the show runs way deeper than that. Uh, It's a shared thing. So those are a couple of things to know. What I'll do, I said, is send my voice across the deep dark. This is a podcast you actually don't listen to, or you kind of barely listen or listening is optional. There's no pressure to listen and no pressure to fall asleep. So some people are listening and you could listen to the show to the very end or listen to it during the day when you need a break. Uh, but you could also turn it down to a mumble or have me under a pillow or whatever. Like, uh, I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff, not for to impress you. <laughs> if, if, if my job was to impress you. Other than with pointless meanders and superfluous tangents, I'd, I'd be, uh, I, I don't know, that w- it was just like, okay, that's counterintuitive to sleep with me. So I can impress you with going on and making no sense and never getting it. You say, wow, that's impressive, your ability. And that, that, I mean, people have said that in some sense. Your ability to talk about nothing is very, what was I? Never mind, I fell asleep. That, so... Um, yeah, it's a podcast you don't really listen to. It also doesn't put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep, to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar cuz, your boar bestie, your boar burr, your neighbor, your boar bra, your boar friend in the deep, dark night to keep you company, whether you're awake or asleep, because there's people who can't sleep and I'll be here to the very end, but I'll also be here to the very end. If you don't listen to me, there's people that listen all night long there's people that listen on sleep timers. There's people that don't start the show till they wake up at two in the morning. But I'm here to 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 keep you company and say you can fall asleep whenever. I'll be here taking your mind off stuff and you just drift off. Uh, so no pressure to listen, no pressure to fall asleep. Those are two things that are hard to get used to. Also, it does take a few tries to get used to the show in general. And that doesn't come from me. Uh, that was news to me, actually, when people started to, to give me that feedback over the years. But I've got some biggest piece of feedback I've ever gotten, other than I strongly dislike you. That's the number one piece of feedback I get. But those people move on, too. Hopefully to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. And then they're sleeping soundly somewhere else, which is great. But uh, that it took, took me two or three tries to get used to the show. And sometimes, believe it or not, the reason I laugh is those two things come in concert with each other. There's a significant people I heard from that said, at first, I strongly disliked you. Then I heard about your show a few more times. And then I listened again. I said, oh, you don't like uh, the show never gets started. And you're not your your charm is in your lack of charm. I never. uh, okay. Uh, I didn't realize it at first or, you know, they said, geez, my life changed. And now, you know, my sleeping was different. And, and so, but it doesn't, you just see how it goes. 
That's a great thing. There's now nowadays there's plenty of other sleep podcasts for you to check out. Mine's the one that uh, doesn't like makes the least amount of sense, I guess. And I'm here to keep you company and just take your mind off of stuff. Like I'm on call. So those are things I'm. You know, most people takes a few tries. Don't listen to me. No pressure to fall asleep. You can listen to me though. Oh, structure of the show uh, and why, like, uh, how is in the So structure of the show is very specific, too, and you can adjust it as you become a regular listener. But if you're new, we just want to give you this info. Show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Then I say some other stuff. That's uh, So you say, oh, okay, I feel welcomed into this podcast. I'll check it out. Then there's support for the show. That way... It's like a restaurant where, where most people don't have to pay for the food. You say, well, boy, that's great. Yeah, like uh, the support from other listeners or the people that support the sponsors. I mean, the show can come out tr- for free twice a week for everybody. So you say, just to, yeah, just go ahead and listen. Uh, so that's what the sponsors enable us to do in the support. Then there's support for listeners, support for communities and stuff we're invested in. Like uh, Then there's support for communities around the show. And then there's an intro and the intro, when people don't like have strong feelings about stuff, then they lump the intro and the support together. But the intro is a show within a show that serves a specific, a couple specific purposes. It introduces the show to new listeners in an inefficient way, but it also is, it gives you some distance, some twilight, a buffer a wind down between being awake and asleep. So the intro isn't really here to put you to sleep. Some people do fall asleep during the intro. But for the majority of people, it, the intro is about getting ready for bed, doing something else relaxing, or getting in bed, getting comfortable, and winding down and saying, oh, there's my boyfriend again, talking about something that's uh, like that... Uh, it, it's it w- w- scooter what a scooter talks about never adds up like i'm using the wrong formula in in a spreadsheet and i say i don't even know what that symbol is what like so i have to put equal first what's that other thing okay like w- you have to put some you can't just put added up some oh uh, some sum okay now you never you know what <laughs> forget uh, uh yeah. How can you, what is a total? Okay. Oh, sorry. I was having a conversation with my spreadsheet brain there. Got a little distracted. Uh, so, um, oh, structure the show. So that's the intro. And, and oh yeah. So some people fall asleep. Some uh, 2% of people skip it for, but for most people, it eases you into bedtime. Then there's a support between the intro and the show. Again, so the show could be free. Then, there's uh, the the show. Tonight it'll be an episodically modular, kind of seasonal episode of our uh, series, Nuns in Space. And it'll be, stand, like every episode, it's not 100% standalone, but you'll be able to catch up. We'll catch you up on everything. So if it's your first episode, don't worry. It'd be nice. It has a soda machine. And uh, I think this one takes place in a pizza parlor. Though I'll probably call it pizza shop or something. I'll probably forget. Pizza parlor is nice though. What I wonder if anyone like took out their like their home in their home and they said, "Oh no, this is what what room is this? Uh, oh, this is my pizza parlor." Because uh, that I mean I, I guess then you'd probably feel I mean I guess if you were like uh, you had a lot of rooms, it would make sense because I only eat pizza on Fridays. So you, like that I make it home. Not that you would make the pizza in the room. I mean, my only reasoning there is that then the room would be too warm for me to be in. But it's like, oh, this is a room where we enjoy pizza. Uh, Or it could be, you're right, I I hear people saying this. uh, It could just, it could have nothing to do with consuming or cooking pizza. It could just be a a pizza-themed parlor. Or what about this idea? Now, this will, like, some people won't know what this is, but hopefully one day you'll discover it. There used to be scratch and sniff stickers. So it'd be a sticker you put on something, you scratch it, and it would smell like something. And there was pizza ones. I don't know what they smelled like, because you say, well, what does pizza smell like? Uh, I know it when I smell it, right? Uh, 
But what if the room was covered in, uh, that was the only thing I was thinking of, like pizza flavored. Wasn't there like a, was that in like a Willy Wonka where they licked the wallpaper or is that just a, like some sort of dream I had? I'm not kidding either. Was there a Willy, what was there a part of Willy Wonka where they had lickable wallpaper? Uh, my brain, my like my brain just walked out. It said, no, it's shrugging his shoulders. I'm like, I don't know. I'm picturing people licking wallpaper. I said, yeah, it's probably from you. Probably, I said, you're right. I probably did do it. Uh, so, pizza parlor, eh? So that'll be later on. So that's the structure show. It ends with some thank yous and good nights. So give the show a few tries. See how it goes. You got nothing to lose. I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff. And uh, yeah. So I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate you coming by. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody. Scoots here. Welcome to our episodically modular series, Nuns in Space. Uh, It's a story. um, Episodically modular means you can listen to it in any order. And believe it or not, this is a little inside inside info like i recorded two openings for this episode because i was uh had a lot on my plate and uh i didn't realize you recorded so i don't know which open opening you heard whichever one is less more seasonal you'll probably hear that one so me i don't know so i mean both these episodes are coming out in the autumn anyway but you can listen to them in any it might not be autumn where you are of course but it could be autumn and you could be on the other side of the globe you know you're in the right place whether your toilet goes clockwise or counterclockwise and the only place i learned that was on the simpsons um where was it oh i'm trying to introduce our podcast uh, or no the episodically modular series nuns in space it's about, it technically is called nuns in space, and there are nuns in outer space, uh, in a spaceship, though they aren't the main characters. They're the nuns from my childhood, and they are in a spaceship. I am their only crew member, and I'm part of my, you know, as their crew member, my job is to work for them. But that is not the main, you know, th- that's not even, that's like uh, only a small part of the story. It's one of the episodically modular modules uh, where I, that's just part of each episode so far. I help the nuns with some sort of issue on their ship. Like, for an example, if it was a commercial on TV and they spilled, like, a fruit drink and they'd say, we need something to pick this up quick, uh, I would find whatever it is that's the, that would pick it up quick, like... like uh, Probably on a spaceship, you wouldn't use paper towels. No offense to the, you know, b- big paper out there. Or, you know, you'd probably, I don't know, would you, though? Because, like, uh, please, maybe we shouldn't go in outer space because you'd say, we'll just shoot it out the airlock, man. And I'd say, yeah, but uh, probably would use a rag and then wash the rag. I don't know if they got ultrasonic, wa- you know, just hang it outside the ship, uh this is why they don't, that's why they won't let me in space. But so that's part of, but the main character on the show is Stan, a sentient soda machine and so, you know, a freestyle soda machine in body or physical form. But more than that, a hero in space. And I am Stan's sidekick, separated from Stan each episode because I'm on the, the ship with the nuns from my childhood. Stan, Stan each episode in a very procedural way and mysteriously Stan, it, it, this is a part of the sh- story you don't hear, but mysteriously Stan will come to um, realization uh, on a planet that it's facing some sort of issue that Stan can help with. Stan has some sort of suit cosmic powers, but is kind of unaware of the powers and in some sort of loop where Stan just, it doesn't really come to, but he's like, wait a second, I'm, okay, here, here's where I am. Here's the situation. Let's just say the parent, like, is that, this is not one of the episodes, but Stan realized, oh, there's parents. They went away for a t- two-week vacation. They did leave the keys to a brand-new Porsche, and Stan would say, hey, Fresh Prince, probably not a good idea to drive that car. Problem solved. 
let's go ride bikes and chew some gum together and maybe buy some, um, you know, or go buy gum and have ice cream cones. So that's not, that. it's not that simple though. So Stan is stuck in some sort of loop. Oh boy, this could take the whole episode. It won't though. But Stan also needs help. So my job, or Scooter's job, is to get from the ship, a uh, spaceship with the nuns, to Stan to help. Because there's something else going on behind the scenes. We don't understand it. Uh, but if I help the nuns successfully, usually I can, it creates some sort of ripple in time and space that I can get to Stan to help Stan resolve Stan's problem. But then it all happens again. Stan doesn't remember anything. Neither do the nuns. I do remember stuff in the story, the character that's like uh, strongly influenced by me. Uh, fictional, though, by the way, the character in the story. That's why he's so dashing. <laughs> but uh, uh, that, that, that cracked me up. Uh, but uh, my brain comes up with these zingers. Yeah, he's too competent, uh, the, the fictional version of you. But he does... Uh, what was my point? Now I got interrupted. But so I end up ha trying to help Stan. I do kind of remember stuff, but I'm not, you know, I'm not the best at remembering things. Even in a fictional comp, you know, when I'm dashing and competent, I tend to forget stuff. So that's basically it. We're in outer space, which could be anywhere. You know, that's kind of a general term. There's a sentient soda machine big with the biggest heart uh, uh, named Stan. In a worlds, in worlds, trying to help uh, improve situations, I go there try to help Stan. But first, I have to help the nuns. It's all to help you sleep, but I couldn't do any of this without the help of a Hollywood announcer named Mister Antonio Banderas. As uh, the ladies, as the gentlemen, the boys, as the girls, the friends beyond the binary. It's time for nuns. In a space, yeah, space. Thanks, Antonio. Antonio, by the way, if you never heard this before, Antonio drives up from Los Angeles just to record this because uh, Antonio loves uh, for the love of sleep, right? I mean, usually when you're sometimes when you get frustrated with me, you say for the love of something under your breath. But I'm imagining what you really mean is. I'm dealing with the for love of whatever frustration Scooter's putting in my path and growth opportunities because of for the love of sleep. Uh, you know, really, we could get to the, you know, usually when I say for the love of something under my breath, it's disempowering. But now you've shown me, Antonio, that if I have a power under that, uh, in your case, the love of sleep or other people, I mean, I think even below you say for the love of sleep, you really just love people. Once again, a shining example of everything except remaining perfectly quiet during a recording session without moving. Not even a mouse or whatever that story goes. Not even a peep, not even a mouse. Uh, the stockings were hung. That's in the holidays, but uh, not even a peep or something. Uh, but anyway, that's a good. Oh, you want to? I do love uh, people. I do love sleep. Uh, I will try not to make a peep. Yeah. Thanks. You, that was a, that was, was that like a, no, it was not a, a, a poem. I mean, it was a poem. It wasn't with the kind of poem you're, you're talking about, Scooter. Thanks, everybody. It's Nuns in Space, and uh, that was Ant Mr. Antonio Banderas. Hey, Pen Pal, it's uh, me, Stan, and uh, Pen Pal, I'm in a pickle again. So hoping Scooter somehow hears this, uh, and I don't even know what I mean when I say I'm in a pickle again. It feels like every time I talk to you, I don't remember talking to you other than that I was in a pickle and also feel frustrated with Scooter, which, I mean, that's kind of, you know, since we've been working together, but I could really use some help, pen pal. I don't know how I got here. I'm not exactly sure where I am, other than everyone that's here feels like they're in the, like, uh, wish, like a large number of the people that are here 
uh, have like some sort of uh, geographic FOMO where they feel like they're living on the edge of nowhere or in the middle of nowhere. And I thought that uh, I've learned the limits of my being edgy because I thought that uh, I would help things by being edgy. And it's not really in the, it, being edgy is not in the nature of a soda machine. It turns out, pen pal. Okay, so who, who you know who I am, pen pal. Otherwise, I mean, these messages only you and Scooter can listen to them anyway. But uh, who am I, and how did I get here, and where? So I'm in a pizza shop uh, or a pizza parlor. I don't know what pizza parlor means. I guess this is. It feels like a soda shop. It's a place. Uh, I mean, this would be pretty nice, pen pal. Like where teens, I mean, other people come here to hang out and eat pizza and drink soda. Great news. And I don't have, I'm having trouble with my geography, but uh, it does seem like these are very similar to human mammals on this planet. So we could be, I don't think I'm on Earth, though, pen pal, but who knows? Maybe Earth 4, who knows? Uh, but, uh, or, you know, Earth, you know, places that uh, Earth got, you know, Earth influenced uh, or Earthlings have moved here. It's not important. That's only, that's the situation. Even if I'm on Earth, uh, I hope I'm not, pen pal, by the way, unless Scooter can come help me solve things. Because I'm actually the soda machine for this shop. So I'm not really, go I'm bolted to the floor. Which is frustrating, like, uh, that's frustrating. I feel like I shouldn't be bolted to the floor. But I guess if I was the owner of the pizza shop, uh, who does shine me with a rag, uh, a lot of times the rag's not the cleanest, pen pal. But we're on a planet, we're, okay, we're somewhere, doesn't matter, where everybody feels, for the most part, especially, well, the people I'm dealing with the most, which are teens, teenage probably maybe earth humans they feel like they're fro so this because because the thing is pen pals you know some space stations have these throwback places so i'm not sure i could be on a you know i just don't want to assume but i keep uh, you know i keep speculating because that's part of uh when you're a soda machine and you're bolted to the floor and you've become sentient you do a lot of speculating Okay, so the good things. I'm a soda machine. I work. It seems like a nice place. Uh, there's teens here. Uh, things were going okay. I mean, you know, teens aren't great all the time, but they, you know, the owner's keeping, you know, he says, no, 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 you know, don't rock the soda machine or whatever. Please, you know, you're welcome to eat. You know, it, it, it's, uh, those are normal ups and downs with teens, right? which I can handle in every, like I said, everybody has a sense they're on the edge of nowhere. And, uh, um, I guess I'm going off topic like scooters. So I'm in a, I'm in a pizza shop where teens hang out, uh, and things were mostly going well. I mean, I can be great, you know, which means not perfect. And we're in a sleepy, you know, whatever, where people consider, I mean, it just in a pizza shop. I don't know where else I am. And I'm positioned in a place where the windows, I can, like, uh, there's, anyway, they can just see, it doesn't matter. So a group of teens hang out here. Mostly, you know, there's a group, group core group of regulars. And it can be dull, but uh, it can be interesting. And one of the things was, you know, they like, they like drinking soda. So I debated talking to them because I was listening, you know, I've been listening in, but then it's like, well, what advice am I going to give them? And then I was feeling like I wished I was a teen and I could be involved and trying to speculate of like, well, if I start talking to them and never talk to the owner, where's Scooter? Uh, that comes up every fifth sentence. Where am I? Why am I here? What am I supposed to, am I supposed to wait? Uh, is Scooter coming? But I was honestly, pen pal, I was trying to work up the courage to talk to the teens. And then one day, I don't know, I guess I went into, I go into sleep mode. I came to, 
and there was this new display. They removed some of the booths, and it was this giant motor, like like a motorcycle, but made out of not like a, it had one had pizza cutters for wheels. And there was something else about it. Uh, it didn't look like it was made from metal, but it was called the uh, Edge Maker 2000. And I guess it was like to, uh, like, I think it was a sponsored thing from one of the companies that supplies stuff in a raffle. You could win the, uh, like, a whole, you know, not that version. Obviously, you're not going to go anywhere on vehicles as pizza cutters for wheels. But there was something strange about a pen pal. Then. Some time passed. You know, the teens were speculating. They were looking at it. Uh, but then it just became another passive thing in the background. Until then, then it, like later, no, not that long ago. And I guess this is where my own feelings come in. The, the um, the, There was like a new uh, kind of screen box on the, um, between the handlebars that started to talk to the teens. Only when I thought the owner wasn't around or any adults. And first it just started making small talk, but always the small talk would lead to a sense of dissatisfaction of being in the middle of nowhere. Like all roads, if you rode with this motorcycle with pizza cutter wheels, it would talk in a way that... uh it was very seductive and cool, but it created um, it created displeasure and reminded them, oh, this is so boring. You're right. Uh, or I would ask questions like, does this town have a double Ferris wheel? Well, only at the county fair. Like, uh, it, that's just a made up question, but stuff like that. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, we like, where do you get your clothes? And they'd say, well, you know, whatever. And, oh, okay. Because you do that all. Not directly, and then I even said stuff about me, like, what kind of soda machine is that? Uh, that looks more like a soda device. And it's stirring resentment for being in, in the middle of nowhere, quote quotes. And then, like, the teens would whisper about the rider of the night or something in this podcast, and that it was like the rider of the night. And then it was the, and then the bike even started sending the, the teens out on quests to say, Hey, I don't know if you have any of this. Uh, I heard this town has this kind of crystal, the glowing crystal. Never heard of it. Oh, you got to go out uh, and find it. And then the teen said, well, why? And then the, the bike said, well, I have a secret power. I can't like, I'm not just the, uh, they don't just call this bike the Edge Master 2000. And they, then the teens, but the bike had been listening or the device or whatever. They said, well, oh, like, uh, yeah, well, like, uh, you know, so it was using this uh, rider of the night. I guess it was something the teens were familiar with, uh, like some sort of talking v- 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 car. But it said, I have powers beyond your understanding to help you fix your fix your problems uh, and fix the whole universe. You're not the only ones going through this. You're going through a universal teen experience, and I can fix it for everyone forever, and you'll be uh, you'll be remembered forever. It said, but you got to go get those crystals. Then the teens said they got the crystals, and and they said, okay, good. Now you have to go get this uh, sort of liquid. I don't know. And then the teen said, well, what is your power? And the, 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 at first it said, uh, well, it said it. And, and I realized there's some sort of power. This is where I said there's something strange going on. It said, I can, I can't, I'm not, uh, these wheels aren't just for cutting pizza. I could cut an edge in the entire universe. And I, everybody thought the, the bike was uh, speaking metaphorically. But uh, then it said, no, no, no. It, so that took a while of the bike. That was not a strong suit of the bike uh, because the teen said, well, like, but, but anyway, this gets caught up in me because finally, as the bike kept coming back to the dissatisfaction, well, here's the solution. We'll just cut. If you're out on the edge, uh, what you need is more edge. And the teens got that. I guess that's a message the teens got. Uh, 
And I said, I had to speak up finally. I said, first of all, it's not possible to cut an edge in the universe. Uh, despite what you say, uh, that's a ridiculous idea. And then the bike started poo-pooing me, and may, you know, just saying, oh, boy, there's a grandmother soda machine. Knows everything about science. Uh, I guess you don't know about metaphysical powers or something. I said, what? Uh, and it said, yeah, I can cut an edge in the universe uh, using dark, you know, neutrinos or dark matter. I don't know, pen pal. My processing is not, you know, I don't feel like uh, being bolted to the floor makes me process less. But, I mean, I understood that part is that it, it can say, it says it's going to, um, Cut a hole, an edge around the universe, uh, and that then everybody would be living on the edge. And, and then I said, oh, okay, so let's say that you could cut an edge in the universe. Uh, that's not a good idea. Like that would be that eventually everything would go over. The, where's where's the edge? Uh, and it's you said you find this place where the matter no longer exists. Uh, and I said to the TNC that, uh, and they said, yeah, that, that makes, you know, then they said, yeah, that'll make it exciting, man. That would give me, maybe our whole world has lost its sense of meaning. And I couldn't like, uh, and it kept going with this. And I said, can't you, can't you see this isn't a good idea? Did you tell your parents, uh, about this cutting an edge in the universe? And they, they, so then I tried a different tactic, pen pal, because I said, uh, I said, uh, well, this is not going to work, uh, going head to head with this, uh, Edge Master 2000. Cause, oh, coming up, no, they don't celebrate Halloween, but they were kind of familiar with it. And I said, well, you don't celebrate Halloween. Uh, don't you know the idea of tricks, uh, tricks or treats, uh, and they said, tell us about the tricks. And I said, oh, like uh, carving a jack-o'-lantern or, uh, you know, just doing stuff like that. Uh, but that didn't appeal. Other than this, pen pal, they TP'd me. So I'm covered in TP t t from the, yeah, TP, like toilet paper. And they're still planning on cutting, using, like getting all the materials this bike needs, which now I'm realizing whatever these raw materials are. And my ominous sense of the bike is that it's not a motorcycle. It is some sort of a cosmic thing that uh, they are. So Scooter, if you can hear me, I'm, I'm trying to get a hold of you. I'm covered in toilet paper. Scooter, I'm covered in TP. I could use some help. Uh, okay, so Stan, are you... Stan, did you say... Uh, Teen, 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 are you singing a song like Teenage Dream? T, 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 T leaves? I don't understand. Why are you, I was having a dream where you're talking to me through a toilet paper kazoo. Toilet paper tube kazoo. It didn't make any sense. Okay, sisters, I hear you. I'm coming to the, hi, sisters, reporting for duty. Uh, right away, sisters, what do you need me to do? Oh, you're having a Halloween party. Really? Okay. Oh, right here on the bridge. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, oh, no, I wouldn't assume I'm invited. Thank you for, uh, so you need me to decorate. Okay. Okay, so I'll just go to the decoration uh, storage area and get the decorations. Okay. Okay, so I'll go get those decorations. I didn't even know we had them. I didn't know. Interesting. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to head to this, uh, hey, pen pal, I'm glad you're listening, going to uh, get some deck. Oh, hi, sister, are you coming with me? Oh, you're leaving the other two sisters behind? Oh, you had a question for me. Sure, go ahead. Uh, what can I help you with? Oh, you need uh, some advice on a costume. Okay, well, um, uh, I'm just collecting, I'm going to be decorating. So what... Uh, you don't have any ideas for a costume? Oh, you got to make your own costumes, huh? Okay, well, um, let me see. What would be the perfect, if, so sister, as well as I know you, oh, it has to be, oh, it's a co co oh, it's like a, with other, you're going to be in communication with other people. Oh, so it's a contest. Uh, 
well, just between the three of you. Okay, well, um, I would say from remembering like our days together when I was a young lad, sister, I think there was like, I remember you had some sort of thing, uh, which you would use to make the grades. It was like a paper calculator, but I always thought it was the answer key. But I'm thinking that maybe there's like a pun you could put together. Like, uh, maybe one of those things like in, that you, you could be an answer key. So that way it would, cause you're the most mysterious, you were always the most mysterious. So it's, uh, I don't know, like, uh, like, so answer key. Okay. You, so that's all you need. Great, great sister. I'm so happy to help. I'm just going to get the rest of these decorations. Oh, hi sister. No. Yeah. The other, yeah, yeah. Your sister was here. Um, Oh, good to be alone with you. Great. Yep. Uh, nothing like, is there something I can help? Oh, you need a costume idea. Oh, tell if for like a Halloween costume contest. Okay. You know, um, I was thinking would be a great one for you, sister is like, like, uh, it is like, like you could be, do you have any idea? Okay. Of one of your students. Well, what about an animal version of your student? Like how they, like you could capture like an animal that captures how your students, you want them to feel, uh, like, uh, something I'm thinking something with a shell, something that, uh, oh yeah. Turtle. Yeah. That is how I felt, uh, is, uh, one of your students. Yeah. Like, uh, but you don't tell them you're a turtle, but you're so much more, uh, you're a spiritual turtle. You make me feel like a spiritual, you spiritually make me feel like a turtle is what the message you're, uh, you're, so that, I think that's a good costume, sister. Okay, great. I'm going to bring, I'll see, you're going to go to your, uh, okay, you're going to go work on your costume. I'm going to bring these to the, um, and start decorating. Hi, sister. Yeah, the other sisters are, uh, I guess, off doing some stuff. I'm just going to be decorating here, putting up these, uh, you know, uh, CATSs and pumpkins and, uh, yeah. What, you look, uh, you like you're thinking about something. Oh, you need a how you need to win the Halloween contest, eh? Yeah, oh, you need help. Uh, well, you you were the one that always talked about being saintly, right? Sister, sister saintly, wasn't that? Oh no, that was uh, that was your nickname, sister. Means you know you're the most saintly of all the sisters. Yeah. So, huh? Like, uh, I guess this is a, this is an out of the box idea, sister. And it probably will win the contest uh, just because my brain has been thinking of costumes for some reason. And you just got lucky by being the last person to ask for help. But I was thinking, like, if, you know, you're having a party. Part of parties, especially at schools, once upon a time was apple bobbing, right? But what if we made an apple bob that was impossible, around your waist to like, uh, or you could like, you could actually do it, but you would wear it. Uh, why? Great question, sister. Well, one, make sure we have waxed really big apples. That's part one with the toughest skin possible, real apples though. But the, you know, that food moderator can do it. Okay. Then we make sure we have a deep vat, uh, a deep, uh, basin you know so you can't touch the bottom of the basin and i think if it's on suspenders that would have a little give to it so it make it even harder to touch the bottom like you can even pull it down a little if somebody's died. but we like i think at the angle if you were wearing it around your waist uh again it would have to be watertight yes sister but so that way and we put a pool noodle around the out inside of the outside rim because the other strategy you would do is like get it under your chin and then use the wall, the rim to hold. Yeah. And then you'd bite into the apple. But if a pool noodle's there, you it'd be harder because you'd have to go under the pool noodle around it. 
Okay, I think I'm finished with the, all the um, decorations, by the Oh, there's no streamers? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, sister. There is no streamers. Um, I didn't see any streamers in the decoration boxes. Uh, oh, you were out of streamers. So I'll have to make them? What do I make? Oh, to toilet paper. Okay, sister. Um, but make sure they're orange. So I should use crayons and markers to color toilet paper orange and black. Okay, you're going to go work on your costume? Okay, well, I guess I get to put up these. Okay. Well, markers don't work on toilet paper. And crayons don't work on toilet paper. Oh, boy. And I had a dream about Stan. Okay, these, um, okay, so these, um, yeah, these, uh, these paints work pretty good. So I'll decorate these and then I'll hang them up to dry. They'll be hung up. Uh, but I was, I was also thinking, Pen Pal, maybe I could wrap myself in TP as like a TP, uh, like a costume, you know, like I'm wrapped in stuff, uh, and then I just stay here for the party, like I sit in a chair, because I'd like to see which sister won. But then I could, yeah, I'm gonna wrap myself in toilet paper now. But then I, maybe I'll get. Oh, I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm wrapping my head. And oh, hey, Stan, Scooter, where have you been? I'm covered in. You're covered in TP. Did you, Scooter? Did you get TP'd? Uh, he's kind of Stan, and I also was like, somehow I was listening to you on, I don't know, on, on the, like, uh, sorry I'm late. Scooter, yeah, I wish you were here sooner. Uh, school's about to let out, and the uh, Scooter thing, so, okay, let me get this toilet paper off you, Stan. Thanks, thanks, Scooter. Uh, thank you, Stan. Um, it, uh, so, oh boy, um, so you... So when you last left off, uh, you were trying to be edgy with the kids by telling them about uh, Halloween tricks, right? Scooter, I was. And uh, uh, that's a motorcycle over there. Stan, I got bad news. Scooter, what is it? I think they may have listened to an episode of a podcast I deleted one time. Scooter, what do you mean? Well, I was like doing, I wrote some fan fiction. There used to be a show called Night Rider. So when I was thinking of Rider of the Night, I think that was like a, like a, a romantic fan fiction about, uh, so Night Rider, there was Michael Knight and then there was Night Rider. Uh, then there was Kit. Uh, okay, Scooter, you're confusing me. Okay, so there was Michael Knight. He was a human. Then there was a car, and then there was Kit. Uh, Kit was like a computer in the car or the car itself. I, I don't know. Um, that was one of the things I debated about a lot. It was a car rider, and then Kit was a computer. But Kit was a computer in a, a talking car, or a car with a talking computer. But the car had some intelligence and sentience, uh, Okay, Scooter, what do you do? What do you mean? Well, I was just thinking these kids may have listened to that podcast I made because I called it R Rider of the Night, you know, like, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Scooter, I don't understand. So it was a procedural show. Uh, I guess you could say it was episodically modular even, where Michael Knight worked for a corporate, worked for some... Let's just keep it simple. Michael Knight was a heroic character, along with his sidekick, Kit, and maybe the like the rider, the car. And he would go places in this car and solve problems for people. Between him and the car and his team, they would uh, help somebody. Like uh, somebody wanted to take the town's water, he would help them. Scooter, like the A-team? It, it, same, yeah, same, like very similar to the A team. Like, was Scooter anything? So, was there a Murdoch? Um, I don't remember, Stan. Pro I don't know. Uh, but, you know, um, I know, like, please don't call Scooter. I'm just wondering, you know, so that uh, why you were so connected to it. Well, I was more connected to it because I said, uh, 
I, I, I like I was just writing f f like uh, fiction about it uh, that you would read after dark at night. Okay, Scooter, what does this have to do with anything? I don't know. Uh, do you think the are you listening into Stan and I's conversation, Bike? Uh, oh, you are, huh? Edge Edge Master two thousand, eh? Okay, pretty edgy. I heard. I heard you're pretty. Uh, heard it's pretty dull around here. Yeah, I was just talking to the soda machine because I got nothing better to do. Um. Yeah, you know what I was thinking. You know that. Uh, I was just wondering, like, which is like, uh, so if you, if you cut a, a hole, like, cause you kind of look like less like a pizza cutter and more like a fabric cutter to me. And I always heard warnings, you know, every time I go, let me tell you about my problems. Uh, are you, cause the thing that was always confusing to me about Night Rider and Kid, am I talking to the whole bike or just to you? The, okay, just you. That's what I thought. I mean, I get this, some of the whole parts. So anyway, anyway, back to me. Oh, I was wondering, because I, I used to like to, like, I get what you're saying about the universe, man. Like, uh, I used to try to go to particle colliders or particle accelerators and ask, to say, hey, what, could you pop this, could your particle collider pop, if I blow a really big bubble of gum, like, and I, could you, could you, would you pop it? Uh, and then they would, the, but I usually have to say that over the speaker at the gate. Uh, so do you mind me coming by? I got a big, I got four pieces of gum in my mouth. Uh, so, but they do always try to point out to me the difference of like ripping a hole in time and space. Uh, now you're talking about cutting a hole. You're not even talking about cutting a hole. You're talking about cutting an edge into time and space, right? St oh, Stan, I put the. I think I put the the uh, the, the Edge Master two thousand asleep. Scooter, the teens are going to be here soon. I'm just wondering what we should do. Okay, well, you know my opinion, Stan, and I don't want to criticize you because I know most of the time you're the one figuring all this out. But I do think you, like, uh, you, um, kind of just sold Halloween short, right? Because, uh, the, uh, whole purpose of Halloween is not just the tricks, it's trick or treat, but most of the time we get the treats. Okay, Scooter. So, I just was thinking I wouldn't reward the teens because that would just make them more likely to... Okay, but isn't there anything we could do with the, the treat part uh, that would help our situation? Because sometimes being edgy, you know, they call me the edgeless boy, Stan. So I'm the last person to go to about, you know, be, you know, you know, remember Nana called me the not bad boy. Meaning, yeah, he's not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, uh, so I know, but one thing I know about edge, you don't want like a uh, scooter. Yeah, you're scooter. You're right. What if we, uh, Scooter, I could create a Halloween party here. All the teens could take place. It would be good for business. Uh, the owner, I've been uh, feeding information about uh, Halloween, so it's already decorated. And we could have, I could give all the candy. We could, uh, we, I could, uh, Scooter, I think I have some sort of strange powers. I can create a, a simulation the teens will believe, because it'll be partially real somehow, where we'll have a Halloween party after the trick-or-treating, but the teens will go trick-or-treating here, and I'll give them candy, all, all the candy uh, that you would normally get, but I will cut edges off all the candy. So, okay, Stan, so you're talking about... Uh, Instead of a Reese's uh, peanut butter cup, it would be scooter would be a peanut butter square with exposed sides, or like a Milky Way scooter. Yeah, it'd be a, it'd be the same thing, snack size, but more cubular. And what about like a Skittle scooter? We can do that, but I don't know if that's such a good idea. We'd ha you'd have to sand the edges down. 
I think this is, uh, but you, all the other, so they'll be trading their edged candy scooter with kids. Scooter, I'm already doing this. As you can see, the simulation's taking place. The teens are here. Wow, well, Stan, you do really have some cosmic powers now, and it's not going well. No one wants candy without, candy needs its edge. Uh, I mean, no one wants candy, like, it makes sense, too. Uh, those Skittles, those M&Ms, even the scooter, it's, uh, the teens are very dissatisfied with the edge, edge uh, yes, and, okay, Stan, just let's get, the one thing I know about teens is, let, okay, the party's letting out, uh, now the, uh, every, now that everybody's alone, the, the motorcycle's starting to talk to them, and the teens are mad at the motorcycle, see, oh boy, the, uh, uh, they're throwing their candy at the edge, uh, scooter, they're very unhappy, uh, yeah, scooter. This the scooter. This kind of worked. It it kind of works, Stan. But the, now the teens are storming out. Uh, there's only one problem. Yes, Edge Master Two Thousand, you're the problem. I, I'm glad you were listening. And Stan and I realize that uh, you uh, will just find more teens uh, with your sweet, sweet words. And obviously, they're not going to listen to me or Stan. And eventually, you'll gather the things you need to put an edge in the universe, huh? The only thing missing, though, is that while I'm talking, Stan's figuring out a better solution. And the fact is that, uh, you know, one of the ways we'll get there is that, you know, many of the, uh, you know, the greatest, like, thing was that with the Rider of the Night was that uh, Michael had... uh, feelings for both kit and the car and that was the underlying tension that kept me coming back you know i never talked about it on the nose uh but i would you know create fake profile even though there was no other fans of this thing i'd create fake profiles and take sides in the great uh kit rider debate uh that the car was rider and the computer was kit uh and that seems to be the case with you and the bike, huh? Um, in that you need it, but you're not. So it's like you're kind of, uh, you need the teens because you, you you need the bike and the teens. Uh, sc- scooter, I'm thinking of an idea, though. Okay, Stan, what's your idea? Well, Scooter, sometimes when you go on and on and on, it creates, uh, it warms up some of my, it warms up some of my solid state electronics in a way that's not great for my processing or when I anticipate you're uh, going on, off on, you know. Uh, I guess I know, Stan, but I don't want to. You're saying sometimes I, Scooter, I get frustrated. Okay. And Scooter, I was thinking of meatloaf. Oh, yeah, that frustrated. And no, 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 Scooter, the meatloaf from the movie the the movie we watch every Halloween. Oh, okay. Uh, Eddie, yes, Scooter. So I'm, I'm uh, Scooter. Can you put start dressing the motorcycle in this outfit? Okay, Stan. Uh, so you're gonna dress the motorcycle like Eddie, right, Scooter? And okay, that's very that's very edgy looking motorcycle with pizza cutter for wheels. That's not a motorcycle, but it seems like a motorcycle. Yeah, sorry, uh, Edge Master Two Thousand. This motorcycle is really edgy. Scooter, now what are you gonna? What, 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 what do you think we should do next? Well, if your theory is correct, Stan. Um. We should, uh, we can't move the motorcycle because we don't know how much of the uh, materials they got. But if the motorcycle were to start singing meatloaf over and over again, like it's songs, you know, wait, you know, waiting for the heart to start and then I drive or whatever. Scooter would be better if it was singing because I'm sure that the computer knows the correct lyrics. What if it was in a, a perpetual loop of, uh, the motorcycle uh, singing 
incorrect lyrics uh, forever in a terrible meatloaf uh, voice. You know, a poor version of meatloaf. I think you're probably right, Stan, that uh, eventually the computer would realize uh, that it needs to, that Scooter, yeah, let's, we're going to go, Scooter, I guarantee it'll work. Uh, okay, so it looks like it's starting. It is hard to listen to. Holy cow. Uh, is that my voice, Stan? Scooter, it is. You recorded these. Uh, I found them in... Uh, I found them in your room. Okay. Oh, because I asked you to back everything. Scooter, correct. You asked me to back everything up. Okay. So, um, so eventually what's going to happen is we'll, we'll, uh, if we stop listening for our own sake, um, Scooter, it's already happening. Um, the computer and, um, bike are canceling one another a scooter a scooter there's something delusional about this yes yeah, Stan that's exactly it it's two different pieces of powerful delusion you're right uh I just realized that so uh it seems like uh the only way to do it would be for the two pieces of delusion like either to learn to live with one part of it constantly singing meatloaf forever and I can easily debolt you and maybe buy you off the pizza shop, or we could just go to sleep. But if I was like an, a motor, like if I was a well, I guess if I was a motorcycle, like they, there is a way. If I was a computer device on a motorcycle that thinks it's sentient but is just made from powerful delusion, and I was in the presence of a motorcycle that could cut edges in time and space. If I uh, hit a right level of delusion, it would just cancel. We would just cancel all. Oh, there it goes. It's all turned to a dust, Stan. Scooter, what happened? Well, it's like one of those things where, like, uh, I don't know, like, what would happen, correct, like, uh, factually. But basically, we had two powerful chunks of delusion. A bike, uh, it's delusional to have a device that would cut an edge in time and space, right? I guess, uh, yeah, I guess so, Scooter. And it's also delusional to think you would use the device. But you can't have a device. But then, uh, I don't know. So this is basically is two pieces of delusion that were separate. And the only way, like the same vibrations cancel one another out, Stan. Oh, Scooter, you could have just said that. Yeah, but it took me a while to figure that out. Well, Scooter, it seems like uh, we should, uh, like, maybe, maybe, Scooter, maybe you want to eat some pizza and then lie in the booth and, and nap by me. Uh, yes, and you go to sleep. I'll be here. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have this booth and I'll pat, I'm going to pat you and eat some pizza here together while we rest. Okay, Scooter, I'm going to rest. Good night. Good night, Stan. Good night, everybody. Everybody scoots here. I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently. Lizzie, Coco, and Sarah. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Jen, Alex, and Vanessa. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Lynn, Bella, and Matthew. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. And good night, Erica, Alexander, and Danielle. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Ben, Sophie, and Laura. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. And good night. Quinn, Teresa, and Mariel. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Jamie, Sarah, and Rachel. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Cynthia, Megan, and Sonny. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Ashley, Amber, and Aaron. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Co, Risa, and Matt. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And good night. Megan, Sierra, and Tom, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Ed, Nick, and Bacon, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Ian, Shazia, and G, thank you, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody who supports the show on Patreon, supports the show directly, and or supports the sponsors. 
That's how we come out free choice a week is that support. And uh, we grow by people just spreading the word about podcasts or podcasting in general. So if you support the show, that's a huge help, too. I really appreciate it. Uh, Thanks, 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 and good night, everybody.